This is the Raw Misfit Show, where two long-term raw vegans explore diet and lifestyle solutions to modern-day health issues. Today's topic, why we need to be truth seekers. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Raw Misfit Show. I am your host, Matt, from MyRawIntuition.com, and we are going to be going live with the one and only Dr. Will Tuttle. Um, if you are not familiar with Dr. Tuttle, um, you know I don't know where you've been, but uh, he has one of the most foundational books that are out there called The World Peace Diet, and this is a book I believe everybody should have and should read multiple times because especially in today today's world, um, it is so important that we understand how to be a truth seeker. And that is exactly what we're going to talk about today. I see Dr. Tuttle is on here. I'm going to see if I can bring him in. So perfect. All right. So thank you, everybody, for hanging in there with us. And we are going to get going here talking about how to be a truth seeker and why it is so important, especially in today's world. All right. And there we have him. Hey, Dr. Tuttle. <laughs> Hi. Good to see you. All right. Good, good to Thanks see everyone. you, too. Sorry for the delay. Sorry. No problem at all. No worries. All right. So, yeah, like like I was saying, we're, we're going to be talking about the importance of being a truth seeker. And Dr. Tuttle is, you know, the, the one showing us all how to do that. He's been such a leader in this, um, you know, this concept of, of finding the truth and being uh, true to yourself and true to, you know, what is right. And I think a lot of people are just kind of following orders, going along with, you know, what they're told and not necessarily contemplating if what they're doing and what orders they're following are in alignment with their, you know, their soul's mission or just the truth that they truly feel in their hearts. So, uh, Dr. Tuttle, thank you, thank you so much for for coming on the show and and talking to this talking to us about this topic. Oh, you're welcome, and uh, I'm really honored to be with you, Matt. And I really uh, appreciate your grace under stress. There, I'm sorry I wasn't on sooner. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> but I'm a little bit new to this particular uh, program. But anyway, so the uh, the idea that you're referring to, which is uh, to to connect with the truth of our own being and to live authentically on, in this lifetime is probably one of the most critical things we can uh, engage in because we're only here for a few decades. You know, you can eat a lot of sprouts and be really healthy, but you still maybe get 10 decades, maybe 11. And uh, I remember uh, an interview with the oldest living woman <clears throat> and um, they said, what's it like being 117 years old? And she said, all I can say is it sure went by awfully fast. <laughs> you know, so our life goes by quickly. And it's, there's a, enormous forces at work to uh, try to bring us away from living our, li our lives and living their lives, <clears throat> uh, basically being exploited. And uh, one of the main things we have, to, we have to understand, I think, really, is that we live in a society that's organized at its core around exploiting animals. And um, every day in the United States alone, there's literally millions of animals that are bred into existence through uh, being impregnated on a rape rack. Their babies are stolen. And there's this massive violence going on in the background. And we don't ever talk about it. We don't address it. We don't think about it, but we're killing millions of animals and sexually abusing them and stealing their purposes and tracking them and force medicating them. And so we're sowing the seeds uh, of, of this to happen to millions of animals. And if we're participating in that, then uh, we're not doing it out of our own free choice. You know, that, that's one of the things I realized. That the only reason I was eating meat, dairy, and eggs for like 20 years or so was because I was just following orders that very loving, caring people thought I should do. They thought I, I need to eat this stuff to be healthy. And, and, and so as little kids, we're born into a society and we just want to be like them, right? We're tribal at, at a very deep level, human beings. And so we want to fit into the tribe and go along with the tribe and their truth becomes my truth. Their food becomes my food. Their way of thinking and attitudes become my way of thinking and attitudes. And at a certain point, uh, we get 
I think, mature enough, hopefully, that we can begin to question some of those uh, attitudes and conditioning and the indoctrination. And that's when we can begin to be a force for progress, for healing, for awakening. Otherwise, we're just reproducing a program. If that program was totally healthy and fantastic, that'd be fine. <laughs> the problem yeah. is that program from our society, we can see clearly, I mean, we're, on, we're getting to the brink of, of mass annihilation of species and ecosystems and really possibly of ourselves. So we definitely need to people on board questioning this. But it's the, the foundational truth is that what we're reaping in our human world, we're sowing in our mistreatment of animals. And so the greatest gift we can give to ourselves, to our loved ones, to the world is to make that basic uh, connection and stop paying for and uh, causing the suffering of cows and pigs and chickens and fishes and these other animals by eating meat, dairy products and eggs. So then we, we, would, we would draw our support from that and then we can give our support, like you're saying, to people who are doing their best to help create harmony in the world through food. Food is our most intimate connection with nature and with our society. You can't get more intimate with someone than eating, right? What, what, what it becomes our literally, our, literally our body. Mm -hmm. So we should be very aware of what we're eating and make sure that it's grown with love as much as we can. Grow your own food or know the people you're getting it from if possible. That's really uh, very helpful. But it should definitely be organic, whole, organic, plant-based foods as living as possible. And then we're connecting in with the wellspring of a high vibrational life. We're connecting with high vibrations that have to do with, with joy and freedom and peace because we're sowing seeds of joy and freedom and peace in our relationships with other living beings. And animals have just as much uh, interest in their lives as we do. It's just that we don't care about their interests. <laughs> but when that happens, pretty soon we find people above us that don't care about our interests. And that's what happens. I mean, when right. we sow those seeds, we don't care about their interests because they're below us. Pretty soon, it's, it's inevitable. It's absolutely unavoidable because that's the way the universe works. What you sow, you reap. If you, if you sow seeds of carrots, you're not going to be getting broccoli. And we have to understand that very clearly. So we live in a society of delusion of a, an empire of lies and it's just everywhere you look whatever is in the media if it's in the media it's a lie i mean mm -hmm. basically there's no truth we have to really understand that clearly we have to rely on alternative media and the main alternative media is from our own inner wisdom we, that's the thing we have to connect with so the two things i emphasize number one is going vegan, you know, living the out, your outer life as an expression of kindness and caring and respect. That's number one. Not just for people who can retaliate. <laughs> you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're not nice to them, you'll, they'll sue you or whatever. But to animals and hungry people and indigenous people and future generations and ecosystems, they can't, they can't sue you. So that's the real test. How do we treat them? So that's number one, going vegan in the sense of a life of ahimsa or nonviolence. But number two, which is in a way even more important, and a lot of vegans don't do this, is a spiritual life, a spiritual path. Get out of materialism. We're, animal agriculture is pure materialism. These animals are sold by the pound. You cannot get more materialistic than selling beings by the pound. Pretty soon we're selling ourselves by the pound, practically by our resume. You know, we, so we have to get on a uh, spiritual path. And that means quieting our mind and taking time to connect with nature and with our own true nature. And that's something the, uh, the globalists don't want us to do, right? The, the globalists want people who don't question authority, who do what they're told, who believe the official stories and go right into the gulag. You know, we don't, don't want to do that. We need to really connect with our own inner wisdom and then begin to co-create communities that are decentralized and where we get our information and our food and our energy, not from big, huge complexes, but locally as much as possible. And so it's like rebuilding society. So I'm, get, I'm talking about a lot of different things, but it's all comes out of the same thing, out of the mentality of questioning animal agriculture, and, and going vegan and then going deeper in our own quest for understanding what we actually are. You know, what are we? 
what is this being? What, what is our free will actually? And how can we connect more deeply with our true nature beyond the being that was, has been colonized, right? That, that's one of the things, I was a Zen monk in Korea back in the 1980s. And I'll just close here with this, this idea, but you know, that I remember realizing after thousands of hours of sitting in silence, just watching my breath and asking who am I and going deeper and deeper with that question, that what I was, was basically uh, an accumulation of conditioning. And that's like this cloud cover over the sky. And the, the, the cloud cover, the conditioning is so thick, we don't even know there's a sky. We don't know there's any blue sky. <laughs> it's like just heavy clouds. And you can, from the time I was one year old, I think the clouds kind of moved in and I was just trying to get along and do the right thing and, and so forth. And it was finally in my mid twenties or late twenties by that point, I realized that these, I hadn't, hadn't actually seen the sky ever since I was one year old. And, and then, but by being in silence long enough, it was like the sky started appearing here and there. I get little glimpses of the blue sky. And that blue sky is the infinite eternal nature of, the, of our, true, our true being that was never born and will never die. And when we start to connect with that reality, we realize that nothing on this earth can damage us. Just like no cloud can ever damage the sky, right? No cloud can limit the sky. The sky is in another dimension from these clouds. Clouds will always come and go. But what we are is radiant and of the nature of love and joy and peace and creativity. And so don't let them try to imprison. The clouds cannot imprison you. You're the sky. We're the sky. And once we, when we realize that, and just live from that place, then it doesn't mean life will be always easy, but it means we'll be living our life. We'll, be, we'll find our way. We won't just be turning ourselves into slaves, trying to grub after money and, and prestige and whatever we think in the outer world is going to give us happiness because we are happy. I mean, our true nature is joy. When we, just, when we quiet our mind, this bubbling spring of joy just comes and it doesn't need any reason in the outer world. It's just who we are. And then we see the beauty around us of trees and birds and people and how beautiful this world is actually. <clears throat> but we're trained to be struggling <laughs> and competing and trying to get enough. There's never enough. So there's this toxic program that's overlaid. And really, it's very interesting. It's, it's kept in place by only a small handful of people, really, uh, who have a huge amount of money and power and are able to pull it off through the mass media and the educational system and all the institutions that have evolved over the last few thousand years. And uh, once we see all that, then it, it's, most people are too programmed to understand that, but people are popping, you know, people are popping open and awakening and beginning to get, especially with this whole pandemic uh, mm -hmm. theater, you know, it's, it's such a theater of, you know, so absurd. And it's like the demons are trying to get us to copy them, you know, and be demonic and, wear face masks and cover ourselves up and be afraid of each other and worried about germs and you know, all this stuff just to, to um, show, you know, have us eat insects. I mean, all kinds of like, they're just mocking us, you know? So we have to really um, come back to home to our true nature and find our, our real tribe, you know, find out who it is uh, that resonates at the vibration that we want to vibrate at. And that's really true. I mean, we're not matter, we're energy, we're consciousness. And when we understand that, then we can begin to be part of the healing of our world. It is so necessary. And we'll be living our short life. It's short. It's gonna, you know, we're all gonna hit that point when we leave this body. That is the one thing, <laughs> guarantee is gonna happen. We're gonna leave. And, and we're gonna look back on how we lived our life. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna see what we learned and how we contributed. And that's what matters. It's not gonna matter how much money we made or how many people thought we were great. It's going to matter what kind of impact have we been able to make to help other people and help animals and help children and help um, everybody wake up and get out of this sticky delusion that tries to grab us and, and make us afraid of each other. So don't, don't, um, don't fall for, for all these lies. I think that's really the key thing. And I really appreciate Matt and your um, creating the space for this conversation. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, that was beautiful. And, and thank you for, for sharing all that. Um, I completely agree and resonate with everything you said. Um, you know, I, I think, and like you mentioned, you know, 
when you start to seek the truth, you, you start to tr truly take your power back, right? Because, you know, if, if you're living your life based on false information and based on lies, um, you can be easily misled to, uh, you know, you know, perform acts of harm against yourself and against others. Um, you know, I think the the big thing with people that are just going by what is being said on the news or, you know, by governments or, you know, just by authority figures, um, you know, they're really giving away their power and they're, they're really turning their back on themselves and that that intuitive discernment that, that we were all born with. Um, and like you said, you know, since one year old, the, the clock came over and, you know, it's, we are continually conditioned, even from birth, you know, we're, we're brought into this world and in, in bright lights in a chaotic environment, we're spanked, we're poked, we're, you know, given all these treatments that uh, are very traumatizing. And especially to a young child that doesn't know really what's going on, as far as I know, um, other than it's it's probably afraid and and not really feeling safe as it comes into the world, and I think that starts to plant the seeds of of fear <clears throat> and pain from a very you know from day one, and so we're we're led to seek safety from authority figures from you know, the, the TV and from all these things that are going to tell us they're going to keep us safe when, you know, it's, it's our responsibility to protect, you know, to create the, the life and, and the, if we're thinking from a health standpoint, the health that we desire, right? And so by, right. giving, by giving away that power within you to others that, you know, from what we've seen, especially over the last couple of years, but it's been going on for decades, right? Um, we've been fed uh, propaganda and a lot of dis and misinformation that has led us to commit acts of violence against ourselves through eating the bodies of other sentient beings and, you know, animals um, and consuming all these processed junk foods that truly dull our mind and our energy, that the energy that we are, um, you know, just putting ourselves in these low frequency situations, it, it kind of puts a blanket or that cloud over our true potential and keeps us from, you know, really manifesting and, and, and reaching that self-actualization um, that we're all capable of. And I think that's why they put billions of dollars into propaganda and misinformation campaigns and, you know, making people that are trying to speak the truth look crazy. Um, you know, they put billions of dollars and resources into keeping those people um, suppressed because they know that a clear, conscious human mind is capable of, of so much and it's also not easily controlled. And so I think, you know, it just goes to show that the power we have within us is, is, you know, unlimited, truly, but it's, it's our responsibility to tap back into that innate discernment to start treating our, our bodies the correct way so that our minds can be freed up and we can start moving ourselves in a direction that's going to help our society and, and help our communities to to start actually promoting you know health and and vibrancy and and right happiness for everybody yeah you had you had a lot of good points there i think there's a couple of things i just i'll just like to follow up on uh, briefly i mean one is you talked about birth and i think uh it's really interesting because i've I've done a lot of research into animal agriculture and the way animals are brought into the world is uh, it's, it's very horrific, really. I mean, the way like a little calf is born on a dairy or any, in any case, it's always uh, the mother, the mother thinks this is my baby on any, on, on any uh, animal agriculture operation, whether it's a big factory farm or even a small backyard operation, it's always the same story. No, no. I own you and I own your baby and I'm going to take your baby. I'm going to do what I want with your baby. 
<clears throat> and that's really, unfortunately, what happens to us. In many ways, we're born almost like calves on a factory farm in the sense that uh, in many ways, we are mistreated uh, from the time we're born, even before we're born, by well-meaning people. Our parents usually are well-meaning, but they've been wounded. It's gone through the generations. And when you uh, have birth with violence, and there's a lot of violence in the way we do this, the, the medical establishment, uh, in the way it sees birth as a, as a medical procedure, and using drugs, and then vaccine, you know, vaccines, by the way, I have to say, I mean, they're the gift that keeps on giving for the pharmaceutical industry, because they, they are, they're designed to weaken uh, what we are uh, physically and spiritually so that later there will be uh, more uh, chronic disease. And it's, it's very clear. I mean, these, this, this, the, the data on this is unmistakable. If you go back to the 60s, uh, the number, the percentage of people that had chronic disease was like 6%. It was very small. Yeah. And then in 1986, they, they took all the liability away from the vaccine manufacturers for any damage. And instead of getting like maybe four vaccines, I was born back in the early 1950s, so I only had like three or four vaccines. And back then, people were uh, very distrustful of vaccines, and they were getting sued. The vaccine manufacturers were getting sued all the time, and they were going to go out of business. They were going to stop that. There wasn't going to be any more. And, and then they say, we, we need to have protection from the government. So the government gave them complete protection, and now kids are getting vaccinated with 30 or 40 or 50 I mean, different things. And chronic disease has gone from 6% to, to like 54%. I mean, and chronic disease means people that are on pharmaceutical drugs for the rest of their life very often. So this has been a massive transfer of wealth to the pharmaceutical industry over the last few decades. And they use that money very well. They use it to buy the media, to buy the government, um, to buy the uh, education of doctors <clears throat> so that they're basically just promoting pharmaceutical drugs and procedures and to basically to buy the narrative. And they are very powerful, and, but even more powerful than them are the wealthy elite in the background that own them. <laughs> and so we have to understand this and that the system in place, I have a PhD in education from UC Berkeley and I studied education and what's really going on. And it's not about creating the ability to cr think critically and be creative and connect with our intuition. It's about creating people who will obey authority. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And the farther you go in the educational system, the more you obey authority, pretty much. I mean, the, the worst ones are the people that have gone all the way through, have a master's degree or have a professional degree. They, were the, they had the lowest rates of that residency. And um, <clears throat> except for the PhDs, PhDs have the highest rate of vaccine hesitancy, followed by people who never went to college. <laughs> and, that, and that's because PhDs, unlike most other, like I have a PhD, I had to do research into research, right? I had to pull back the curtain and figure out and learn about how to do research. Because to get a PhD, you have to make an original contribution to your field. And so people with PhDs are a little, typically a little more savvy. We, we know science is a, is a scam in many ways. I mean, whoever's paying for the studies are going to get the results that they want. So they're not going to fool. They don't fool me. I mean, none of this stuff fooled me. I mean, as soon as this pandemic thing back in January of, of February of 2020 came, uh, people asked me what I thought. I said, on a scale of zero to, to 100, uh, my fear of the, getting the disease is zero. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, but my, my concern about what's going to happen with the government, the government's going to do and the corporations is a, is a hundred, you know, that's what it's about. It's, it's totally, a, it's a, it's a psyop, total psyop. And it's just about transferring wealth and power more and more uh, from us to this tiny elite. And we have to understand that very clearly. It's a war against humanity. And it's just basically the livestockization of humanity, turning us into livestock. If we're going to turn cows and pigs and chickens, free living, beautiful beings into livestock, we're sowing the seeds. So they want us, the, the globalists want us to eat animal foods because then we're easily dumbed down. We're easily controlled. We don't have a sense of confidence. We don't have a sense of self-respect. If we're eating misery and terror and fear and pain and despair and causing it and feeding it to our children at a very deep level, we don't feel good about ourselves. You know, it, it's unavoidable. You cannot have, and from my point of view, a really authentic spiritual path 
if you're eating animal foods, because at a certain point, you have to say, well, I don't, you know, I don't care about those animals. I'm going to eat them. I'm going to cause them suffering and pain. I'm going to eat that misery. And we all human beings, we've all been given this wonderful gift of a physical body that does not require us to eat animal foods. There are no nutrients in meat, dairy, and eggs that we have that are not in plants, right? If they're in the flesh and secretions of animals, whether it's essential fatty acids or amino acids or uh, there's, not, there's no carbohydrates anyway, which is the most important thing, and fiber, the most important thing, uh, but vitamins and minerals, all these things are made by plants and come from plants, come from the soil and from the air and, and the water. So basically plants are the miraculous uh, creators that create food for us and we can thrive on that. Here I am, I've been a vegan for 42 years and I can run circles around people half my age, Not nothing to be proud of. It's just, you know, when you're eating the food you're designed for, it's fantastic. You know, I don't get, I haven't been to a doctor. I mean, this is the thing I'll say, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're programmed. I was fortunate. My father was going to be a doctor and he went into medical training and he was a medic in World War II mm -hmm. in France. And, and then he, he, he um, you know, he said, he always said to us, don't go to doctors. <laughs> and I said, dad, what did you do when you wanted to be a doctor? He said, what I did basically when I was in France, I, the, the soldiers would line up and I would just give them shots one after the other, you know, and I don't think it was good for him. So he always told us to stay away from doctors. And so I learned kind of from him, from his example, just don't go, just stay away, you know, as, as much as possible. Not that sometimes it may be helpful, but for the most part, we're taught that if we have any little problem, we should take a drug. I have not taken, I have, have not been to a pharmaceutical drug store in over 50 years. I think it was 1971 or something. And uh, the last time I got an aspirin or something. And, and so for 50 years, I've just stayed out of the drugstore, stayed out of the medical establishment. And it's, I think it's possible. I think it's a part of a spiritual path. It's like we can heal spiritually. We can heal our consciousness. Most disease comes from eating toxic food, toxic air, toxic water. Chemicals are spewed everywhere. Remember, the petroleum industry branched and made more profits when it when it branched into petrochemicals right petrochemicals and so now there's all these chemicals and they make the petroleum industry make billions of dollars on chemicals and then a branch of the chemical industry is the pharmaceutical industry it's just a branch the pharmaceutical industry is a branch of the petroleum industry we really have to understand that and so it just makes more money selling petroleum as chemicals and as pharmaceuticals but they're all toxic and they're all harmful and they all make sick people, which make a lot of money. The, the pharmaceutical industry's worst nightmare is people like me who never use it, right? I never go, I haven't paid one penny. I haven't never had health insurance. I don't do it. I just don't do it. So I think um, we have the power to, as like you say, as individuals, we have tremendous power. That's the amazing thing. Even though we've been so beaten down, they, they've tried so hard, you know, with toxic chemicals and, and injections and, education and everything and yet here we are we're still a spark is alive in a, and many people that spark is still strong enough to pierce all of that programming i mean that's amazing to me that people are so as awake and kind and loving to each other as they are mm. and considering how how we've all been so wounded so this is really about healing those wounds and information and truth and understanding are the key things for healing really for healing, I think it's the most important thing. Uh, so for me, being raised, first of all, by someone who wanted to be a doctor, but then what he did, instead of being a doctor, he bought a, a newspaper. So I was raised in the newspaper <laughs> business. My father owned a whole chain of newspapers, which I was supposed to take over this whole chain of newspapers outside Boston, Massachusetts. So I learned from that, don't trust the media, <laughs> because I learned early on from my just watching what happened, listening to my father and mother talking at the dinner table, well, we can't run that news story because one of our main advertisers wouldn't like it. You know, So I learned in my bones, if any news, it's only what the advertisers approve of. You can never, you can never run news that the advertisers won't like because they'll pull their ads and you'll go out of business. So now I understand like pharma, the pharmaceutical industry is giving millions and mil billions of dollars right to the media, not so much to sell their products. It's so that 
the media will never say a bad thing about big pharma ever. <laughs> you can guarantee they'll cover for them because they're getting paid to do it, right? So NPR, anything, any, 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 any media is bought, it's captured. You gotta know it's deception. You were being deceived. And this is a spiritual truth in any religion, whether it's Christianity, Buddhism, Judaism, Hinduism, the, the forces of darkness, they, they, their, main, their main tool is deception, right? Deception is the main thing. Remember, there's different types of crimes. If you kill or you steal or you sexually abuse, you're causing harm and it's, you can see it. It's physical, it's obvious. But there's one kind of crime you can't tell when it's happening. And that's deception. Deception is a whole different thing. But deception is the worst because deception, people can live their whole lives being deceived and they never even know it. But it completely destroys the fabric of our society, of our, of our health, of our psychological and spiritual and physical health. And we don't realize deception is the greatest crime, really, because you can't see it. How do you know? How do you know? if you're being deceived and what's really being taken from you and how you're being harmed. This is something we really have to understand this. We really have to see that it's up to us to, to defend ourselves from deception because the, the gatekeepers like the FDA and the USDA, or whoever we think or whoever we've put in place or, or Google or whoever we think is supposed to protect us and give us the truth. No, they've all been captured. Everything's been captured by now. After 10,000 years of animal agriculture, the systems are, are so established that they're captured. So we, the people, as individuals, as divine sovereign beings, it's our intuition and our wisdom that protects us from that crime of deception. And the best thing we can do is just cultivate what's called in the spiritual tradition, discriminat discriminatory awareness, right? The ability to discriminate, uh, to, to actually tell the difference when we're being deceived and when we're not being deceived. And often we're deceived by our own thoughts. It's our own conditioning. <laughs> that's the thing. So to be able to understand that and, and, and discriminate, and that's very connected to intuition. Intuition is our inner guidance system that will guide us to live our unique life and to clearly show us our path. And we can't really say to someone else what the, their truth is, but we can connect with the, what the truth is for us and how uh, deception is being used. And um, I think the thing we have to really understand, and I'll just close with this idea because I think this is important, is that animal agriculture is the main deception. That's the, the grandmother, grandfather deception. When you deceive people into uh, thinking that they need to eat animal foods to get protein and calcium and kill animals, that's the great wound. Then they start eating misery and violence. And then you can almost, then you can pretty much lead them like they've got a, you've got a ring in their nose and you can lead them around after that. But the other big deceptions are like the medical deception, um, the media deception, the deception, war deception, like population. There's so many climate change. I mean, there's a whole bunch of deceptions that are used to take away our freedom and make us uh, lock us down basically and make us afraid and and germ theory germ theory is a huge deception this idea that we're surrounded by malevolent forces billions of of viruses and bacteria that are dangerous they're going to harm us you better be careful you you better wash your hands every second you get you better put on a mask you you, you better social distance <laughs> you better just be afraid 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 of all you know and you gotta i mean that if they can get people to believe that, then they've got us completely. Oh, and the other one is genes, right? Oh, your genes are bad. Nothing we can do about it. You got to take our drugs the rest of your life, right? Genes and germs. Those two, those are really heavy duty deceptions. And they've both been disproven, right? I mean, we know uh, now that the, the genes really play a minor role. I mean, it, our, it's, our, it's our lifestyle and our attitude it's much more uh, important. Same thing with germs. There's what's called terrain theory, which is basically the idea, which is much more accurate, that our health is determined by the quality of the terrain, of the mind-body connection, how healthy our food is, how, how the quality of our exercise, the quality of our relationships, the quality of the purpose of our life. If we're living a purpose, if we're getting up every morning and, and meditating and connecting with 
the gift that we have, the quality of gratitude that we're feeling as we go through our day. I mean, these are the things that really matter that get our, our physical body going. Think of our, we gotta remember our physical body is in a rising in consciousness. It doesn't have a reality apart from consciousness. So if, I, if my consciousness, if I'm waking up in the morning and I'm like, oh no, it's, it's Monday morning. Oh, I don't want to go to work. You know, I'm, the message I'm saturating every cell in my body is, well, there's nothing to do today, everybody. You might as well get sick because he doesn't really want to do anything, right? <laughs> but if I get up in the morning, I think, wow, another day, another opportunity to live, to grow, to share, to contribute, to create. Can't wait to see what's going to happen. Every cell is thinking, wow, we got it. We got work to do. <laughs> you know, let's go. Let's let's uh, let's cooperate and let's make things happen, right? So we have to really understand the power of our consciousness. That's the greatest power. It's an yeah. infinite power. It's tremendous power. And this idea of germs is only, that's, a, that's an idea for people who are afraid of life, afraid of nature, afraid of animals. You know, and, and the thing is, if I'm eating animal foods, and I go to the store or to the restaurant, I take out my wallet and I pay for meat, dairy products and eggs, what am I? I am an invisible killer, right? I'm in this invisible, somewhere because of me taking out my wallet and paying for this burger or this, che or this cheese, an animal is going to get stabbed because of me. Right? I, I am this invisible killer. They can never see me. But an animal is going to be raped. A baby is going to be stolen. Blood's going to hit the wall. And it's because of me. So when we do that over and over again, pretty soon we're looking around like, man, there's invisible killers all around. I'm afraid of them. Because as you sow, so shall you reap. If we're going to insist on being a, an invisible killer ourselves, an invisible rapist, an invisible harmer, then pretty soon we there's, 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 we're, we're vibrating at this low level where when someone says, oh, the viruses are deadly, bacteria is out to get you. But yeah, that makes sense to me. I'm sure they're out there. I'm afraid of nature. I'm afraid. And we're afraid of everything. We're afraid because we are causing fear. So we have to realize you're never going to, you're always going to be a slave of fear if you're causing fear, if you're a malevolent, harmful being. And we don't think of ourselves as that from the point of view of cows and pigs and chickens. We are. We don't need to eat that stuff. So that's a very deep wound. And we and it's our own natural integrity that we're holding down. And it's not our fault. It's just we're born into our society. We're taught to do this. But we are responsible. <laughs> so once you know this, you, you got it. Then it's time to really live it. And. The beautiful thing is that when we do, we find our body, our mind gets healthier, and then we can contribute to a healthier society. If we don't know this, we can't contribute to a healthier society because we're sick ourselves. So uh, these are the deeper truths, I think, that we have to begin to uh, understand. And once we do, then we have freedom. We have the freedom. Like, like Jesus said, when you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And it does. It really does. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of a lot. Sorry, I went on a long time, but no, uh, appreciate that was great. Your... yeah, that was perfect. Um, and yeah, so, so much gold in what you just said. I mean, deception being, you know, the most kind of insidious way that we're, um, you know, yeah. taken advantage of, um, because yeah, people, when, when people are deceived like this, they, they start to almost beg for their own enslavement and their own mistreatment, you know, and, and, you know, like you said, when, when we treat animals that way, then we take, you know, we bring that sort of existence into our own lives. And yeah, it's, it's something that I think is such a, a, a an important point to make is that you are, you know, you reap what you sow. And, and if people really want to have the, you know, heaven on earth, like everybody says they want, they need to start taking responsibility for their own actions that are contributing to the way things are. Yeah, and the neat thing is that it's definitely possible. I mean, that, that's the thing that's so intriguing and, and beautiful in the, in the final analysis. We live on a beautiful earth. We all know it's beautiful. You go outside and just look, <laughs> get into nature. I mean, I'm so grateful. I've had the chance to travel the world a lot. I mean, the World Peace Diet has been translated into uh, 17 languages. We've, been, we've gone all over Asia, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, all over Europe, North and South America, all 50 states, you know, 50 countries, given lectures. And, and, and we've spent a lot of time in nature. This earth is so beautiful, but it's also not only beautiful, it's abundant. And with animal agriculture, if we stop that, if we reduce it dramatically, we can feed everyone on a fraction of the land. So 
the, the, the door is open, the pathway is there. We could feed everyone on a fraction of the land. We could allow the rivers to heal, the oceans to heal, the rainforest to heal, our bodies to heal, our societies to heal. We could easily create gardens that could feed everyone easily on a fraction of the land. There's no reason for us to be terror, terrorizing animals, uh, creating these authoritarian systems of, of, of domination and exploitation of the weak by the strong. It's just all a reflection of this old wound of animal agriculture. So the most important thing is we go vegan, we understand why, and then we begin to co-create at the local level, I think is really the, the way to do it. Uh, start growing our own food. Like we, we started, we lived in an RV for 18 years and all we could do was grow a lot of sprouts, which we did. <laughs> but now we have, uh, we've planted 70 fruit and nut trees. And so we're, we're harvesting lots of fruits and, and, um, and then vegetables, of course. And, and so, and herbs and berries and things. And so, and we're even selling some of it at the local farmer's market, you know, so we're starting to even, you know, trade and, and sell and give and so forth. And, and, and then we have solar panels. So we get our, all of our energy from, from the sun and, and we try to, you know, just try to create local um, empowered communities based on healthy food, healthy living, and sharing information, creating maybe a, a cell uh, of like-minded people who are prepared uh, in case, uh, you know, because I think the system that we're depending on, the larger system um, is starting to c collapse. And mm -hmm. that's part of, I think, the plan is to collapse it. And um, because when you create something, uh, you create a lot of panic and then people uh, are easily, more easily controlled Then they, they come, you know, then we go to the authorities and say, please help us, save us. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't ask them to be saved. They'll put you in a nice prison cell and you'll be safe forever. So we have to, um, we have to really save ourselves. We have to get more uh, self-reliant. You know, I was born and raised in Concord, Massachusetts. I, I learned to swim in Walden Pond. When I got older, I started reading Emerson and Thoreau and they were the first vegetarians. They had the first vegan community actually back in the 1840s, Fruitlands. And, and, um, but Emerson wrote his essay, Self-Reliance. It's so important to become self-sufficient, self-reliant, self-responsible. That's what freedom really is. Freedom is being responsible uh, for the quality of our life, the quality of our relationships, the quality of what we're putting into the world. When we, when we take responsibility for that, we have, we're empowered uh, to create a beautiful world. And each one of us can do it. The, it the, but I can't make anybody else do it. All I can do it is do it myself and then perhaps be an example. And that, but that's a great thing. There's a tremendous power in that. So I think ultimately there's these two powers in the world. There's the power of the individual and there's the power of the group, right? <laughs> and the group in a sense creates the individual and the individuals create the group because we're all conditioned by our society and we can, then we condition, we make society. So the question is, is, well, which is more powerful? Is it the, the society or the individual? And I would say, it's the individual. Ultimately, the individual is it. And Thoreau, when he wrote his essay on civil disobedience, he, he said that in there somewhere. He said, one person can bring the whole system to its transformation. You know, one, one of us, I mean, each one of us, when we, we have tremendous power, I think we can't even imagine. When we, if we can love enough and wake up enough, um, you know, we, we, so, so that's, it, that's the thing to, to cultivate is our own capacity. And when we do that, everything else will take care of itself. Don't expect other people to make us happy. You know, we have the foundation of, of happiness and creativity in ourselves. And when we find that and just give, be a giver in this world, then we'll find that we're happy. Uh, we don't, we don't have to please people, but we, but we can, uh, contribute in a way that maybe is disruptive in some way, but we're not disrupting out of anger. We're disrupting out of creating, creating something positive. And I think that's really, each one of us has to find our unique way of doing that. I think, but it's great to see you doing it so well, really. Yeah. yeah thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, again, going, going from the victim mindset into the creator right. mindset is, is really something that, yeah, I think, is, is so important for people to understand which mindset they've been living in and, and start moving towards that. So yeah, very well said. Um, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
how are we doing? We've been going here for almost an hour. Do, do we yeah. have uh, any particular other, uh, I mean, we've covered a lot of, of ground here and it's been great. I really appreciate everyone joining us. Thank you all, everyone, for your attention and your awareness and your efforts, your aspirations. You know, we are, we are in this together. I mean, even though that's what they, they like us to say that, it's sort of a guilt trip, but we are really in it. But it's, each one of us has uh, the power to, um, to make a better world. And it's great to, to see it happening. The most important thing, I think, in, a, in an age like we're in now is don't comply with tyrannical uh, mandates. Just don't comply with them. It, it may be difficult and we may be really challenged, but I think... Uh, that's a that's very important uh, to just don't go along. That's what we that's what veganism is, right? We don't comply, even though everybody's oh come on, just it, it won't hurt anybody. Just have a little piece of cheese. No, I'm not going to do. I'm not going to cause it suffering to other beings. I'm going to respect the sovereignty of myself and respect the sovereignty of these other beings. And so we have to continue that even more more uh, forcefully in some ways than ever. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, I, I know we are at, at the hour. Um, do you do you have just a few minutes for just a couple questions, or do you need to to log off? Probably, maybe like at the most, uh, I only have a couple more minutes because I do okay. have another uh, one after this. So, okay, sure. Um, just how about just one question here? The first one I'm looking at. Um, Somebody is curious on your view versus living foods versus cooked foods. Do you do you have any any thoughts on on that? That's a good question. Yeah, I'm. A, I think uh, I I'm not a complete raw foodist. I think there's a place for for mostly raw. I mean, we we eat most we eat like two thirds. I'd say you know two thirds. Um, for us, like breakfast and lunch, <laughs> you know, we have green smoothies and salads and things. Uh, we really like. We grow a lot, but um, but we also feel there's a place for some good starch. Like usually in the evening, we have some potatoes, sweet potatoes, or grain, some kind with vegetables you know so um i think uh a raw 100 percent raw diet is great for healing especially like and cleansing and fasting you know fasting is really good juicing is really good fasting i went through when i was younger you know i'm, I'm 69 now so when i but i was younger i did a lot of fasting and every year i would fast for at least a few days or a week or whatever do cleansing but i think if you're but the most important thing i think really is a high raw is really important um, organic, veganic, if possible. So, so there's no blend meal, bone meal, manure, if possible, grow your own food. And, and then of course, cr making the food with love. And that's a really important thing. Like, you know, really doing it as a meditation. Uh, it's not so much, it's what we eat, but it's also how we're preparing it and how we're eating it when we're eating it. All those things are important. And then there's other, there's so much more to health though than just food. I mean, really, you know, the quality of relationships and purpose, creativity, connection with nature, exercise and movement. I mean, there's, you know, all these things are huge. Uh, mental attitude, meditation, inner peace, uh, not, you know, healing old wounds. I, you know, I had chronic back pain when I was younger, and I realized it was from when I was a little boy. I, I, at a certain point, I didn't I, want, I was afraid to reach out really into life. And so I, I kind of developed this pain. And then in a long meditation retreat, I realized what it was and I thought, oh my gosh. And then it was gone, you know? So we have to do sometimes the healing. If I just went and got a bunch of drugs to kill the pain, I never would have healed the inner uh, problem that I hadn't faced in, in myself. So very often the body will outpicture uh, things for us to heal. And so, it's, so instead of seeing disease as a bad thing, uh, see, it is a good thing. It's like either I'm cleansing, you know, I'm sore throat, runny nose, rash, diarrhea, all those are just the body cleansing. We should celebrate. Don't try to stop it. And, um, or, or it could be something mental that needs to be addressed. Relationships. Maybe I'm still angry with my parents. Who knows what? So address that, heal that internally, and the, the outer phys physical symptoms will take care of themselves very often. So I think, um, yeah, that's, uh, the, the quality of food is important though. It's really, uh, make sure it's uh, organic. I mean, we don't want, the glyphosate is everywhere. So you've got to really um, be aware about all that too. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I would love to, maybe, maybe we can do another one and just do a bunch of questions. That would be great. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely set something up for that. Now that I know how to do this. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Instagram's kind of a weird app, but yeah, it's gotta be on the phone for some reason, so. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I appreciate you, you know, co-hosting the show with me today and, and answering, you know, the question and, and yeah, just being, being the example for everybody because, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, I, I love your message is because it's so authentic and it's so real. Um, you know, you, you don't worry about, you know, following the, the herd. You basically walk to the beat of your own drum. And that's what I really respect about you. And, and I just thank you for everything that you're doing. And also, again, your book, The World Peace Diet. Thank I you. hope everybody will go out, pick this up. Um, definitely read through it a couple times, take notes. Um, it's full of a lot of wisdom. So yeah, thank you again for, for your time. Right. And Thanks, yeah, Matt. I would, Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I would love to, I'll set something up with you for a Q and A at some point. Great. All right. Thanks everyone. Much love. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Raw Misfit Show. Tune in next week for another exciting episode.